You're listening to The Morning Show with Dave Hyde on 99.2 Hermitage FM, online and on your smart speaker. And I'm joined by Eagle Eye Cherry. How's things been with uh, over the last 12 months? Because uh, I was watching back at some interviews with yourself and you absolutely love touring. Yes, I do. So it's been a challenging year and a half, I must say, but I'm not the only one in that boat. Have you found it being really sort of, um, I don't know, sort of social anxiety really with being stuck in the house writing? And then sort of now things are opening back up, being able to go back out. There's been a lot of different phases uh, throughout the year, but I luckily had just finished touring on my last album before the lockdown. So I got like a year and a half of touring and then was planning on getting back in and making some new music. So in that sense, it was quite all right. I didn't like a lot of my colleagues have to cancel my concert, stuff like that. But um, so I got into it. I managed to get into the studio before the major lockdown with my band and wanted to capture our live sound and so this new single is one of those tracks that, that we recorded before before everything stopped. The new track which is I Like It which is out now and available now which I absolutely yeah. love I think it's a summer anthem I've got to be honest. That Thank was you. Was that recorded live in the studio as in one go or was it all separately you know the production was it separately recorded because I know No we, we got the band in and recorded it and then obviously we reworked it a little bit afterwards but it's basically it's a, it's a live take which I think you can feel in the energy in the crowd. Because one of your albums, you actually went to Nashville as well to record, didn't you? Yeah, the one before, Streets of You. I did, um, yeah, a big part of that album in Nashville, which was kind of, I'd been, you know, I'd taken quite a break before that album, so I was kind of looking for new energy, and I traveled around and met some different people to work with. I was in L.A. for a bit, stuff, and then when I got to Nashville, I just felt right at home and got really inspired. Not only just the, 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 the work, but, you know, after you work, you go out and you just hear all this amazing music. It's just music everywhere. So that was cool, and then I took that energy, made that album, and then it just kept going. And then uh, when the pandemic came, it put a stop to my flow, but yeah, weird. Because in Nashville, they still record in one room with all the different compartments up so you can hear the live sound. It must have been a completely different experience going there and recording something in the studio like that. The actual recording was kind of the way I've always worked. I mean, I've pretty much always gone in with the band. You know, I make demos and get a pretty clear picture of where the songs are heading, but then you want to track it with the band. So, so I did that there, but the difference was, you know, there's some of the players there, it's just like pretty pretty high level on, on that whole thing. But it's just, it's just a different vibe, you know. Um, and then also being, you know, I've spent a large part of my life in the States and I grew up in New York and then now I live in Stockholm. So it's just nice to get out of here and, and get to another place like that. And there is the Music City. You mentioned that obviously your family moved to Sweden when you were young, then back to New York when you was about 13? Those years from 13, and I guess I moved back here uh, when I was like 28, 29. And that's the, those years that you become the person you are. And I mean, um, New York was just such a perfect place to be when I got into my teens. And then just the music, and, and I was drumming with different bands and big city to kind of find your bearings. And then it's funny because the new track I like it is a lot about those early days when I got my first apartment in Brooklyn and and, uh, and their life was just a big party and that's basically what that song's all about. <laughs> well, I was surprised that you started acting originally before getting into music. I know it's a funny thing. I guess you know when you grew up with a jazz cat dad and and then my sister blew up with Buffalo fans and stuff. It's pretty big shoes to fill. So I got really into acting and went to drama school and and then I started getting work as an actor. So that was kind of a no brainer, just kind of going down that. But I think in, in retrospect, I needed to do something different from the music. I needed to do something that was my own. And then the music was always there. Like I said, I was playing with that and stuff. And then. The songwriting started taking over. And once I discovered that, then I just realized, wait a second, this is a whole different thing. Uh, I left the drums behind me. It's just absolutely amazing because you appeared in The Doors back in uh, 1991. <laughs> I did. So it's going to be very hard to spot me in that movie. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to go back and watch it. Yeah, I found an old photograph. I think I'll probably lay out on Instagram at some point, but because I've been battered by the police, I have all this blood running down my face, and um, it's quite a funny picture, but um, but it was a great experience, you know, to be there with, with Tom Cruise and all the stone and all the stuff, even though I basically was well-paid extra. It was, you know, I was young, like 18, and getting through that whole thing was quite an experience. 
Well, that sort of leads me on to 1997, Save Tonight. You've probably been asked loads and loads and loads of times about Save Tonight, but I want to know about the video. Yes. Yeah. That video was unique in 1997 where you played every character. It cut to a different section. It looked like an all-in-one take and... Yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. And the song itself is, is an anthem of the 90s, you know? Yeah. What was it like to record that? The tune I, I, I did here in Stockholm and um, the video we also shot here. So I was first, I signed because I was kind of like thinking I was going to do something kind of small to start out and then build up from there because I didn't feel like being in the big, big time music business with the time was, was right for me because I hadn't really figured out who the hell I was yet. And then I wrote Say Tonight and that song said, no, 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 no. We're going all around the world. <laughs> and so when we shot that video, I was still signed to a small independent label. So there wasn't much money. And uh, I met with the guy who ended up directing it. And his question to me was, what do you want to make? What kind of video? And I said, well, I know what I don't want to make. And that's, I don't want to do a video with lots and lots of edits. So he said, all right, well, let's make one without any edits. And then we just started brainstorming and came up with the idea. And then it also was a kind of a cheap way to make a video. And it worked. And it's great because the song was like received so positively and people heard it on the radio and stuff. And then when they saw the video, that was kind of the like icing on the cake and it just kind of pushed the song to the level. It was yeah. great. We were just lucky. Well, even playing it to today on the radio, people of all generations know that song. So it shows that it, it's, it's one of those that's going to stay around forever. It's standing the test of time. Every songwriter's dream. And I hope the song lives longer than I do. That would be amazing. But it is like, because it's so simple as well. It's only four chords. So it's that song that even young kids learning to play the guitar, it's, it's a great song to learn. It's a good place to start. So a lot of people, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh my God, yeah, Save Tonight was one of the first songs I learned on the guitar. So go from 1997 when you managed to sort of, you know, Save Tonight, the album, it went absolutely massive. You'd see you spent years touring. Yeah. Did you meet any of your, did you meet any of your idols in the music industry after that? I met many. <laughs> uh, I met many. And, uh, you know, everything from touring with Sheryl Crow to hanging out with U2 to getting to meet B.B. King. And actually in England, it's some TV show. I don't remember which one it was. Probably not Pop Pop. Um, and uh, uh, David Crosby recording with Carlos Santana and on his album, Supernatural. Yeah, it was a trip. Brian May. I met Brian May. and I had a night out, crazy night out with Brian May and the Monaco and Tamika Pickerum. It was a weird night. You've mentioned a couple of people I wanted to talk about. You mentioned Brian May because obviously you you actually um, was opening for him, wasn't you? At is it uh, Slay Castle? Uh, that's not where I met him, but he might have. They might have played there. I don't know, but yes, I did play Slay Castle. That was also one of those trips, but fantastic. But I met him at the airport in Monaco. Oh, brilliant! We were doing some TV show there. And uh, I see these clogs. I'm looking down at the bags because I'm about to pick And then there's these clogs and like an Amani suit. And it's Brian May saying, Mr. Cherry, nice to meet you. <laughs> and then we, we hit it off really well. And then, yeah, like I said, we had this weird party night there with and Tamika Tikaram and the singer from Stand Out Bout. Right. That was a funny, funny night. So there's been a lot of lot of things that you never thought you'd experience that during the ride. Well, what was it like to record with Carlos Santanas? Because he's just, uh, he's, for, as a guitar player and a musician, he's... Yeah, he's like, he's like a, meeting a guru, he's very deep. And he, my father was quite spiritual and his approach to music was very kind of that level. And Carlos Santana, exactly. My dad had passed away before I made my first album. So in a way, it was right, special to hang out with a guy like Carlos. And when I agreed to do the album, I mean, he always had his followers but I didn't think I was saying yes to, to an album that was going to sell 30 million I thought I was just you know going to make music someone who I was a big fan of and then to be in the studio I laid down my vocals first and then he started doing his guitar tracks and to hear you know him laying, vo- laying tracks to my vocals was just a trip and that's the thing that's why that album worked because there was so many different styles of music on the album with all the different people that he worked with like, but as soon as he starts playing the guitar it becomes a Carlos Tana song no matter what the groove is like pretty cool have you ever thought about sampling some of your dad's tracks to put into one of yours as a bit of a nod your head to him I have uh, but I haven't done it yet but but I have I, I did have on the first album there's a song called Permanent Tears and there's a bass loop kind of hidden in the groove that's a, a Charlie Hate bass player that my dad played with a lot um, I, that's about as close as I got so far <laughs> but it has crossed my mind but then we've also, also me and the rest of the family have talked about you know finding different ways of, of uh, stuff 
here in my dad. So there has been a lot of different projects, uh, uh, exhibits, and there's a book that's come out. They, stuff. So there's different ways that we're honoring and my mother. Watching some of your interviews back, obviously being uh, moving from country to country and your dad, you know, being as famous as he is, your sister, you know, Nina Cherry being absolutely, you know, worldwide renowned to yourself. Her daughter, Mabel. Well, that was the other question. I want to know, Daisy, your daughter, is she more excited to go to one of your your gigs or one of Mabel's? Oh, definitely Mabel. <laughs> no question about it. Not only is it her cousin, but yeah, obviously her and her friends and everybody love Daisy's old track. I know the album a lot better than I would have if it wasn't my daughter. But spinning in our car all the time. So yeah, which is uh, as it should be. You know, um, and I remember even, uh, you know, having my jazz cat dad, and you, you, that's what you grew up around. So you kind of take it off your grandma. And so it wasn't until I got older that I kind of, you know, got in, started getting into music on my own right. And, and then I started really being able to listen to my dad with new ears and realize amazing stuff he had done. But while I was a kid, it was just, you know, it was just there. It was just my dad doing his thing with you. Right. Do you remember a time being sat there listening to him play and thinking, oh, shut up, dad? But then all of a sudden you've heard it on a, on a song. Sure. I mean, I, I say this about my dad because, you know, my dad was very much an improvisational musician and whatever happened that night happened only that night. It was kind of in the moment. And so I've said that, you know, the best gigs I've ever been to has been Don Cherry concert, but also the worst gigs I've ever been to Don Cherry <laughs> You never knew. Like, if he wrote a chat list of musicians, he's a joke. You might as well just throw it away. He's not playing any of the songs. No, you'd say it sounds like it was a crazy childhood, but one that's inspired you for your life. Yeah. And it sort of, you know, built the family up to where it is as well. Yeah. And I mean, it was fantastic because my parents brought us with them. So, there, you know, it was a lot of touring as a kid. But um, like when I go on tour, most of the time, my daughter has to stay at home. And um, I'm very thankful for, for all those years that we were out. Plus, I got to see so much of the world as a kid. And they it has definitely allowed me to love touring and be someone that really am very at home for me in a way to suck at home but touring is something I love I have other friends who hate touring you know and it's difficult actually right because I was watching an interview going back to about 2012 where you said like you'd have visits from your wife and your daughter you'd get on the on the tour bus and all get into your one bunk <laughs> obviously she's she's older now she's now a teenager I take it that can't happen as much it's after you have to wait for school holidays yeah, exactly. I mean, school is hardcore now. And the school I went to when I was a kid, they were cool about it. Gave school work. But um, yeah, she's got to, you know, got to stay here and do that school thing. Plus, she's into her friends and all that. But she does love coming just for a short visit. On that she does she play instruments? Is she taking after her dad? Not so far. She's into music, uh, but she's also very into dancing. So at the moment, it feels like that might be where she's heading. Never know. I mean, Mabel was getting into music, I guess, yeah, in her young teens. Uh, and would I thought that she would be a global success at that time? You can never know. Suddenly, things happen. It's all about making a name for yourself. And guess what? You've got a good family. You've got a musical family. So there's enough influences from all different genres to take you in the right yeah. direction. It's something in our genes. But I guess, you know, I mean, if my dad was a farmer, I'd probably be good at farming, you know? <laughs> what you grow up around. I think you'd be bored. You like touring. <laughs> exactly. But I wouldn't have known that, would I? <laughs> Have you ever thought about? Have you ever thought about sort of getting together and doing something as a, one single as a family? We we haven't. We never talked talked about it like a cherry Christmas album. Yeah. Um, but uh, but we you know we do like with like I said earlier you know there has been moments when there's been like a concert in the spirit of, of Don Cherry our father and we've participated in that so we've done a few different things. Mm. But we've never like talked about doing, and it's, we all kind of also are, do so many our music so different from each other. You know, and then it does, and what I do, and then what Mabel, it's just very different. So, but um, but maybe one day we'll do like a massive festival together. I mean, we could almost do an entire night on stage just us. We'll we'll all come to you. Don't worry. We'll all come to you. you yeah, cool. come to us. So with I Like cool. It, how did the idea come together? Because for me, I think, as I say, it's a summer anthem. It's one of those songs that is going to be played everywhere over the summer, I think. I really hope your words ring true. It's, um, the tune, but lyrically, it was like 
flashback to my first apartment in Brooklyn in my early days in New York being out and about. At those at that time everything was just a massive party. Just all about hanging out with your friends and having a good time. And then that kind of thing of waking up the next morning feeling absolutely horrible, but yet you can't wait to get back out there. And um in those days that there were no consequences. <laughs> it was like just get out of free patch. It was all just uh, a big positive thing, you know, and it's just good memories. I, I managed to capture that all in the song. And now, you know, after we've all been in lockdown for over a year, I think everybody wants to get out with your friends and have a good time. I think the timing of the song is pretty good. Well, very quickly, just a couple of questions, and I think just quick fire questions, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Are you into film or music? Which one would you choose? Yeah, music. Game of Thrones or Harry Potter? <laughs> I've never watched Game of Thrones. I'm probably one of the few, so it's going to be Harry Potter. Tour bus or hotel? Tour bus. Definitely. And my final question, which person in a band keeps you up on the tour bus the most? For snoring or... (laughs) Well, there's been a few different constellations in my bands, but there was one bass player uh, from Nashville that I had in the band. And when he started drinking his maker's mark, he went from being the sweetest guy in the world to being the same. <laughs> and one night, we're all sleeping on the bus, and it's about 4 a.m., and suddenly, he's blasting, and it's Merle Haggard country music at top volume and wakes up the entire bus, and everybody oh. wants to kill him. So I have to go down and deal with him. <laughs> and I sat there, and I trying to turn it down a little bit, because you get very aggressive if you handle it the wrong way. That was that was one of the classic, unbelievable. Well, Eagle, thank you very much for joining me this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to actually interview someone who was a massive part of my childhood. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been a great pleasure. And I really hope to talk to you again soon. This is I Like It by Eagle Eye Cherry. It's fantastic. Get out and buy it now. Thank you, Eagle Eye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. See you in person next time. You're listening to Hermitage FM. The heart of your community. And this is Dave Hyde.